Good morning and welcome back to Ms. Jordan's Intervention Group A. So on yesterday, uh, what we looked at is we actually broke down our article entitled Oceans. Um, we looked at all of our text features. We analyzed our text features and we also talked about them. We um, also talked about the uh, genre of our article. We discovered that that was nonfiction and what nonfiction meant. And we also talked about our thinking job. Okay, so that's just to recap um, what we talked about on yesterday. And what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and pause the video and I want you to reread uh, the article so that you can just kind of gather your thoughts again on what we're going to be talking about today because we'll be answering questions today. All right, so you can pause it there for that video or for, the, for that reading. All right, and so then here is the back of that article. You can go ahead and pause the video again so that you can uh, reread that information. Okay, perfect. So now let's go ahead and jump into our questions for today. Um, the first question for today is, is that it says, Earth is sometimes called the blue planet. Blue planet. How does the photo help you understand that name? Perfect. The photo helps me to understand that name because the planet is actually blue. Like all of that blue in the planet. So that's how the photo helps me to understand the name blue planet. Okay. So our next question says, what text feature does the author use under the title oceans next to the picture? What text feature do you see under the title oceans next to the picture good job you see the bullet points because those what we actually have uh, marked out here on the paper so you see the bullet points good job now my next question part b to that question it says how do the bullet points help to organize the information how do the bullet points help to organize the information Good job. Bullet points help to organize information because it actually kind of slows down the reading of the information and it organizes it by showing you that these are three different completely thoughts, okay? So this is one thought, two thirds of Earth is covered by oceans. This is another thought, the oceans are really one giant body of water. And then here's another thought, we have divided up and given names to five parts of that body of water and then it names the different oceans. So that's what the bullet points do. Bullet points is actually telling you that there are several different ideas here in one section, okay? So just to kind of help you sort through the ideas. Good job, good work, okay? And so my next question is, what characteristic of a predator is shown in the photo of the shark? Where is the photo of the, oh, you're right. It's actually on the next page of the article, okay? So now, let's look at this. It says, what characteristic of a predator is shown in the photo of a shark? What does the word characteristic mean? Okay, let's break that word down. Characteristic. What root word do we hear in characteristic? Character. And so then what is character? We talk about this, we talked about this in class several times character traits remember we talked about character traits things that you can get from your parents you know your parent has blue hair you may not blue hair brown hair you may have brown hair so what character characteristics do we see or what characteristic of a predator is shown in the photo of the shark you can't help but to see those large teeth so yeah it has really big teeth and a big mouth like those are some of the characteristics and so I would not want to fall down that shark's mouth. I mean, that is huge. So I'm looking at those characteristics and that's what I see. What surprising fact does the author include about sharks as predators? What surprising fact does the author include about sharks as predators? Well, the surprising fact that the author included about sharks as predator is, all right, let's go back over to our section and reread it so that we can find the surprising fact. So sharks are amazing hunters or predators. Predators kill and eat other animals. Many people are scared of being attacked by a shark. 
But the fact is that people are more dangerous to sharks than sharks are to people. Let me tell you, I know that that's a surprising fact because yesterday when I read that, I was shocked when I read it. Like, whoa, wait a minute. People are more dangerous to sharks than sharks are dangerous to people? Now that's a surprising fact. So I'm just going to put a little dot beside that to let me know that that's my text evidence there. And then there's a part C to this very same question. In what ways do you think humans are more dangerous to sharks than sharks are to humans? In what ways do you think that humans are more dangerous to sharks than sharks are to humans? What are you thinking? Well, humans can kill sharks. Yeah, they have the they have the upper advantage on them because they can uh, they can shoot them or they can stab them with something and kill them, and they're actually above them uh, when they see them in the water and not underneath the water. And I think sharks can see, but sharks only eat other animals they don't really eat people they don't want to eat people okay all right so then let's go to our next question which terms in the on the record chart are in bold type okay so i'm going to take a look at my on the record chart so let's look and see what terms are in bold type so you have deepest spot in the ocean challenger deep in the marina trench and then you have biggest animal in the world blue whale so i've located my bold uh, my bold words there. So then there's another question. Why are those words bolded? You are correct. Those words are bolded because those are actually like headings um, in the, those are actually like headings for this particular section of on the record. So you have your, your sub, your top heading, which is on the record, and then you have subheadings, which is deepest spot in the ocean, and then biggest animal in the world. So it's separating that information, and again, just like our text features um, on our first chart over here, the same thing that we said about that, is separating the ideas, and it's giving us different ideas about that section, okay? And so, how does the bold type help you to understand the content in the chart? Well, it's organizing it. It's telling me that deepest spot in the ocean, the answer to whatever the deepest spot in the ocean is, is challenger deep in the marina trench. And then it's telling me that the biggest animal in the world is the blue whale. So they're connected, right? Like I could draw an arrow and show how, they're, how they are linked together, okay? So that's how that information uh, is helping me to understand the content in the chart. All right, so then my next question says, look at the section called C schools. Look at the section called C schools. The word schools has more than one meaning. How do the text and the picture help you understand its meaning in this context? Okay, so the word school can have more than one meaning. How does the picture and the text help you to understand its meaning in this context? So first of all, let's think about school. Well, I know the first meaning of school is the school that I was actually going to, right? So I know that that's one meaning of the word school. And then I discover here that the other meaning of the word school is what a fish swimming is like a large group, right? So then I can draw my arrow here and I could say the second meaning of a school is a large group. So school could be one place that I go to to get an education and to grow my brain. And then another school could be a large group of fish. Okay, so the picture helps me to understand that because here on the picture, I can actually see the school of fish, which is what we notated on yesterday. I can see the large school of fish. And so that's how that picture is helping me to understand that. Okay, and so then now let's go to our next and final question. Look at the photo of the fish swimming in a school and read the text under sea schools. Okay, so let's do that first. I'm looking at the picture of the fish of this large uh, school of fish, and then let's read the information. Fish swim in a school, or a large group. Swimming in a school helps keep fish safe from predators. Big fish looking for a snack get confused by the size and changing shape of a school. The large numbers of fish also help most of the schools survive an attack. All right, so now here's our question. How would swimming in a school help protect the fish from a shark attack?
All right, so there's my answer right there. You're so right. My text evidence is big fish looking for a snack get confused by the size and change in shape of the school. So I'm just going to put a bracket around that. Yep, you are so smart. Good job. Way to be brave. Okay, and so then my next question says, how does the photo help to show that? Well, we actually just discussed that, and you're right. The photo helps to show that because the photo is showing me a big section of small fish, right? So it's showing me a larger school of fish. And then I've also seen this in some of the science videos that I've watched in class with Miss Jordan where little fish get together and they actually look like really large fish. And if I don't know what that looks like, hey, I have access to YouTube right at my fingertips. I can go and Google a school of fish or go and pull up a video on YouTube right now after this video of a school of fish just to see how they actually really do change and can actually sometimes scare the larger shark. How amazingly cool. All right. So we concluded our study for today. And again, thank you for watching Miss Jordan's intervention video for group A. See you next time. Bye.